Reports all around the world suggesting that Ten Hag will be sacked after the FA Cup final tomorrow. Regardless of the result, Deja Vu says the front page of the Dutch sports newspaper because, of course, Van Gaal won the FA Cup and was sacked two days later at Manchester United. For more on this, Kieran is with us, as is a Frank Lepuff. Uh, we'll kick things off in the studio, Craig. Must be a Dutch thing. <laughs> just blame that's it. it. Blame <laughs> the Dutch. That's it. They just hate the Dutch just people in Manchester. Play, that's it. Blame it all well, on the well, Dutch. I don't think, you know, for, for anybody that was out there thinking that supports Man United, and I don't know if there's anybody that was thinking along these lines, of what if they win this game and would he save his job? But there's a real long game to this, isn't there? You know, yeah. rather than, you know, think back to Roberto Mancini beating Man City in 2013 and Wigan got relegated. You know, there's a bigger picture here and that is it's just not been good enough. The other side of it is, should they have addressed this a long time ago and, and not have it leaking out, you know, a couple of days before a cup final? Yeah. But they were probably thinking, we'll try and keep it hush-hush and we'll wait till everything's over and then we'll announce it. But like everything else at most clubs and especially Man United in the last few years, they leak like a sieve. They can't keep anything. So uh, it's, a sh it's a shame in somewhat that he's having to go into this game facing all these questions. But I, I think he already knows his fate. And uh, United need to move on. But quite frankly, I, I think his time is up there, unfortunately. Are you wearing orange as a tribute to him today? Yeah, so, oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's yeah, I feel bad for Very him. fitting. Very I feel fitting. bad for Do you think he knew already? He has to know. Although he officially hasn't been told by MD. Because you know he's walking around the corridors, walking, and people are walking past him and, <laughs> and giving it one of them not to look at him. I mean, it's not a surprise. <laughs> it surely shouldn't be a secret. And they should have done that. They should have. The best thing for the team would have been if they'd turned around on Monday morning and said, "Look, Eric Ten Hag's not going to be here. We wish him all the best for the next for the for the next the final." And everybody, they might have just taken the air out of the situation. Maybe everybody would relax a little bit and go and try and do what they've got to do in the cup final. Instead of waiting for a couple of days, as Craig said, it leaks out, big surprise. But it's the right decision, if indeed that is it, which it will be, because there's absolutely no reason whatsoever why anybody should keep Ten Hag at Man United. He gave a speech, didn't he, in his last home game, after the game, which yes. I, th I think was a little surprising to see him do that. But I, looking at it at the time, you know, I think most people are thinking he, he knows. He knows what's happening and so he's addressing the home crowd and yeah. thanking them for the support. Uh, Kieran, how does this affect the players, if at all, going into tomorrow's game? I actually think it removes the pressure in a way. I think it takes the attention away from, from the players more. You know, before it was it was that Ten Hag's job was, was dependent on, on the player's performance or result, whereas now, you know, that's not the case. The writing's on the wall and the players can just you know, go out there and focus on the game and themselves and play more free. Um, as for Ten Hag, ultimately, you know, it's, it is a tough one. I don't, I don't think he's been given the chance to show what he's really capable of. Uh, he's had so much off the field problems to deal with. He never really got time to play a full strength team or connect with the fans. He's been picking up the pieces since he got there, really. So I, it's hard to judge his tenure there. Uh, and by the way, that's not a green screen behind Nadam. He's genuinely standing outside Wembley at, what, 10.30 on a Friday night. What a treat <laughs> uh, for him. Uh, how do you think the fans will receive this news, Nadam? I think it'll be mixed, to be honest. I think the point that Craig was making about the fact that it's leaked, that will feel like a sort of sense of embarrassment as such. But then there are tons of United fans who would be happy to see him leave. But again, that sense of embarrassment in terms of this coming out the day before, you know, the, the cup final against your big rivals from the same city. I think it is a bit of a funny situation to be in. And I think if I could piggyback on what um, what we were just saying then from Kieran, I think Craig mentioned earlier in the show about how Man City had a similar situation with Mancini in 2013 or 14 against Wigan. And I think that day, what's different compared to today is the fact that United in this game are underdogs. So I think at times the fact that you know, the manager is going to be on his way out. It feels to me like maybe some of the players will be more comfortable with that. And so they do arrive in the game tomorrow with no expectations upon them. And there will be a great sense of freedom, I believe. <coughs> it's not to say that that's essentially what they need to perform better as such. 
but I think for some, I think that weight might be lifted off their shoulders. And I know it feels very, very toxic from that standpoint. But I think when some players do not necessarily turn against the manager in a really open way, but when they lose belief in their manager, then I think it's a sense of change that needs to come. But to go back to your original question, I think the fans in some ways will be embarrassed. I think I'll be interested to see how they sort of show their support to him during the game, how they'll perceive his changes, how they'll sort of praise him at the end, whether he's won or he's lost. Because if it is the defining, the last moment for him, you know, he has actually brought them a trophy, which is something that many people thought that they wouldn't be able to do. Frank, if you're sitting in that dressing room, what difference does this make to you as a player? Uh, it, it depends. Uh, what was the, your relationship with uh, with Ten Hag? I mean, if you are a young player and you were playing, you know, you you could be a little bit uh, um, um, sad about it. But otherwise, you know, all the players would be kind of relieved that uh, that he has to go because it didn't work. We have to be uh, clear about that. And you are a new player, you feel that maybe he's a good coach, but it doesn't work. The chemistry doesn't work. And we're not talking about young player like you can find at Chelsea where you have to build something to create something and create the experience. The list of players that you have at Manchester United are made for most of them uh, from experienced players who are already international players and they know exactly what to do. It's just that they didn't connect. So the main reason has to be the coach. So I think most players are going to be relieved in a way that they're going to find somebody else who maybe going to find the right button where the, he can press on and, and suddenly it works for most of players uh, to play all together. That's what everybody wants to find. And, and I think also for the fans, they're going to be relieved because they want to see something else. It's, uh, hmm. it's about time to see Manchester coming back to their best. But yeah. players-wise, really, it doesn't really matter in a way. But for most of them, I think they are relieved that uh, Tenag has to go. I don't quite see how... I mean, you could probably go through this whole United squad in one in one hand and and pick out the players that we perceived would run through the proverbial wall for their manager. Most of them are looking after their own backsides. Mm. They are, and and that's part that's been part of the problem, as well as the injuries. So I don't quite see how this news is going to make much of a difference. They're just going to somebody else is going to come in and. And although he's been far from perfect, they, until they get rid of some of these players, uh, they're going to have similar issues. Albeit they should, you know, he should have been doing better with what he had. Going back to Kieran's point about uh, not having the, the players at all times to work with and the fit, the injuries, and they have had a lot of injuries. Uh, but again, you could count on one hand probably the games where they've all stood up. Most of them, and we've talked about this. We've talked about this endlessly, that it's been the games against the weaker teams in the Premier League in particular yeah. that he's been outplayed, that they've looked more comfortable, they've created more chances, a lot of these teams, they've dominated even at Old Trafford. And that's before you get to the FA Cup semi-final, where you have a Man United team with 11 internationals, they're 3-0 up, and they get battered from the 50, 55 minute mark onwards, absolutely battered to a point where they're clinging on after 120 minutes and it goes to penalties. And I think when ownership and investors have looked at that and said, Do you know, we have got problems, but shouldn't we be better on the field than Bournemouth at home and, mm -hmm. and Brentford, who absolutely cattled Man United? Mm -hmm. OK, they got a draw. And then Ten Hag comes out and says, well, Man City struggled here. They, they, they didn't. It's just, it's just too much nonsense. Man City did not struggle at Brentford. Phil Foden scored a hat trick. It was a cakewalk, uh, and so there have been too, there's been too many anomalies from the playing, from from the decision making, to the style of play, to how they've been dominated by other teams, to his rhetoric. When you put all that together, Stevie, and he the, had no yeah. chance. And the biggest, the biggest one is is the one that that, that was brought up about injuries. Regardless of nobody can argue they've had injuries. But when, on paper, you look at the teams that they've put out, they've got talent. Mm. So the coach's job is to mould that talent together and figure out how it works. From the first game of the season to now, he hasn't been able to do that. He's had a whole season to figure that out, and he has not been able to do it. And that's his job.
His job's not to be an ambassador for the club or to talk nicely or, mm. or to, be fan, to get all the fans on his side. His job is to coach the team. Mm. That's why he's called a coach. And he hasn't done it. And that's why he's going to lose his job. Uh, Nadam, who do the fans want to replace him? <laughs> yeah, you, do you think I've been going around asking United fans what they think about things? Well, not really. I feel um, like you're our man on the ground out there, Nadam. Yeah, <laughs> not on that bare ground. But I think from the, from the limited few that I've spoken to, I think the talk was that Pochettino, since he's available, I think the talk was that he wanted him quite a few years ago when he was his first leaving Spurs, I believe. So I guess that would be something from that standpoint that is exciting to them. Obviously, we've heard discussions about Southgate and so many people being turned off by the idea for you know different reasons according to their perspective. But I think the fact that Pochettino is available, I'd imagine quite a few of them would be very keen to bring him to to North to the to the North rather. Yeah, it's like a no-brainer, isn't it, Frank? You look at that list, Pochettino, of course, Premier League experience, McKenna understand his link with Manchester United, Tuchel just coming off what happened at Bayern. Poch just seems like a layup. Yeah, yeah, uh, and, and I think it should be the right, uh, the right decision for for Manchester United because yeah, he proved again uh, with uh, with Spurs uh, how he can handle. He proved with Chelsea. You know, we can say that yeah, it wasn't a great season, but he ended up you know finishing six and being qualified for the uh, Europa League where nobody expected it. And with a more experienced team, I think he can achieve something. He knows how psychologically work with uh, with experienced players and. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's going to be up for the job and, uh, and, and do better than anybody else. I have uh, question marks about Tuchel. I mean, we, we saw how, um, how unstable he made the uh, Bayern Munich dressing room with some uh, experienced players like Kimmich, for example, like Müller. I don't know how it's going to work with uh, Casimiro as well, with maybe Fernandez, uh, uh, Maguire. So I think Pochettino can be closer to the players, more attentive to them. So I think it could be it can be the right choice. Kieran McKenna is an interesting one. Yeah, so he's I, obviously I got he's... two back to back promotions with Ipswich. He's got links yeah. to Manchester United. He's been linked with Chelsea as well. He's yeah. in a very dangerous situation here. I don't think he's ready for either of those. Right, Brighton is another one he's been linked to. Listen, that's still a tough act to follow. Potter and Deserbi, they, and they they'll sell players. Yeah, they've recruited well, but they'll sell. Look, he's back to back promotions. He was at United before, under along with Solskjaer, mm -hmm. who. So he was involved in the tactics before, because we know Solskjaer really wasn't. Uh, and getting players at Ipswich to listen to your methods, and his methods are apparently are a little different, and uh, he, you know, he does things in training that are a little bit outside, thinking outside the box, and, and that's fine, and Ipswich players have taken that on board, but going to a big club with some of these so-called superstars and asking them to do the same thing, that, that's difficult. So I think he's in a difficult position if he jumps at one of these jobs because his stock is really high. If he goes at Premier League with Ipswich, they get relegated. He'll go to Bayern. So what? <laughs> He'll go to Bayern. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, 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 I personally that would, that don't think... That would be a real gamble, wouldn't it? I don't think he's ready for that. Who would you have, Stevie, from that list? I would have Pochettino. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't think twice about it, quite frankly. Yeah. You know, Manchester, Manchester United are actually in a, in a real mess. <clears throat> and so do you go for McKenna and you don't know what you're getting, or do you go with... And to say a safe pair of hands is, is disrespecting Pochettino, to be honest. Or do you go with a guy who you know has ability, who knows his way around the team, he knows his way around players, he, knows, he, he understands how big a job this is. Anybody else, particularly on that list, seems like a gamble. Mm, yeah. Karen, does he want the job? I, Sorry. Why, why wouldn't he I want would it? I would imagine well, so. I, think, I think he'd well, want well, it. Well, yeah. well, well, maybe if you've had a long time out of football, uh, and you think, oh, I need to get back in. But how many shambles does he want to walk in and out of? I mean, sure. PSG was a bit of a mess. You know, it was a circus. And it didn't go too well from there. He's gone in at Chelsea. He's, he saw the big picture at Chelsea. He had plenty of time to think about it. But he's gone in there. It's probably worse than, than he thought. And now he's left there, whatever way you want to call it, sacked or mutual but consent. Craig. Well, he goes to Man United. Uh, yes, they have this, Frank, this one point... Two five billion Ineos investment, and they're going to fix the roof, and they're going to fix the training ground, and they're going to bring Dan Ashworth in, and all this. But is Pochettino ready to walk into another mess and really, really, really put his stock back on the line again? Mm. That's a difficult one. Go on, Frank. Yeah, but yeah, the, the thing is, uh, when you are 
uh, Pochettino or in the standard of Pochettino, you're not going to find a club where everything works perfectly when the, the coach leaves to, to leave you the space. You're always going to go for a club who has problem. It's why they sacked the former uh, coach. And you're going to yeah. step over, uh, the step up, sorry, and you're going to face problem. That's the thing. That's your life. And uh, everybody's facing that, you know. I'm, I'm sure Ancelotti, when he came to Real Madrid or before when he came to PSG, it wasn't a, a, clean, a clean way. He had to sort every, every problem out. And uh, that's going to happen to Porsche, uh, Pochettino every time he goes somewhere else. And uh, that's what it is for PSG, Chelsea, and maybe for Manchester United. Maybe he's looking for the sort of Guardiola, Klopp, the Ancelotti scenario has gone away. But that sort of scenario where... A manager's not been fired, mm. but is walking away for whatever reasons. And, and you know, Arnie Slot's going into Liverpool, right? It's a big job. Big job to fill those shoes. And he's going to have to do a lot of work because the size he's of the got club. got a foundation. It, there is at least a big foundation to work with, as there will be at City, as there would have been at Real Madrid. That, that, that's the difference here. Other than Bayern Munich, where else is Poch going to go? Is he going to go to, like, an Aston Villa-type club? Right. I mean, why would you go to an Aston exactly. Villa-type? Because... Because you can, you, he can go there any time he wants. But Man United might not, never, might, might not ever come up again. Mm. And I don't think his reputation has particularly changed because the PSG, every man and his dog who's been in there, has had the same problem. And I don't think there's anybody pointing the finger at Pochettino. It's, it's all pointing at people up the stairs, Bowley and, and Win Stanley and Stewart. Mm. So... I, I, think no, I, a no that, I, I, I think this is a no-brainer for him as well as Man United. I don't mean just that, but I mean the fact that he's had to fight so many fires at this Chelsea that he's gone in there and... I mean, Eric Ten Hag's not a bad coach. He just has not been able to get a grasp of it in his second year. He's not a bad coach, but even he, having his experience of Ajax in Champions League semi-finals, has toiled with this lot. And that's what I mean. Does he want to go back in and risk everything and toil away with basically 50% of them a bunch of wasters? Yeah. And then you've got people on long contracts who are coming towards the end of their career, like, like, like Casemiro. You've got Varane who's, who's leaving. You've got a bunch of players who have been injury-prone. You've got Marcus Rashford on huge wages who basically hasn't done anything this year. And then that was a great line from, uh, from Eric Ten Hag in the press, wasn't it? Marcus is going to use his a mission from the England squad to fuel himself, <laughs> <It's motivated. laughs> to motivate himself. And I'm thought, man, <laughs> you should have told him he was out of the England squad in January yes. or October because I don't see anything that's fueling this guy at the moment. Uh, Kieran, last word on this. Who would you have from that list? Is there a reason why we haven't mentioned De Zerbi? Or no, just... no, no, it's definitely De Zerbi's in the conversation, yeah, no, isn't I, it? I, yeah, I, I think he's done an amazing job at Brighton. Um, I always hear good reports about him. I, I know a few of the players there and they have nothing but good words to say about him and his honesty and um, how he deals with the players. I feel like United is kind of like the next step for him. Um, and I like Poch as well, but I, w I would also consider De Zerbi.